damn it, dude. Do I'm, I don't, I, this guy is so dumb. I thought this guy was like supposed to be really smart, but he's so stupid. The facts, let me tell you what it means and then let me chill you to the bone like I've just dunked your ass in a vat of bloody gazpacho. So, Friday, Donald Trump temporarily closed U.S. borders to refugees or economic migrants or jihadists or, or rape refugees. just want to come in with a bunch of wives, make a bunch of babies by suckling off the U.S. tax system through the welfare state. I don't know. I don't even know what to call them anymore. Immigrants without papers. I don't know. That seems to offend Italians in the past. But anyway, the reality is that everyone's going mental. Well, everyone on the left is going mental. And this is just one more nail in the coffin of the final rights of leftist credibility for reasons I will get into right about now. So there was an executive order put out. Now, everyone's saying Muslim ban. Not true. Not true. Not even true. And if you're out there, let me tell you something. If you're out there tweeting about this or twittering about this or chanting about this or Facebooking about this, a Muslim ban, Muslim ban, you are part of the spark of the fire that is trying to burn down the world. And I'm trying to stop it. I'm trying to stop it. But you don't make it any easier when you put out provocative nonsense like that. It is not a Muslim ban for reasons we'll get into in just a moment. So in the actual text of the executive order signed by Donald Trump, what you will not notice, which is actually quite interesting and should be kind of a tell that you might be being trolled by a master troller, is that the order doesn't actually specify any of the countries to be included in the visa suspension. The countries are, in fact, uh, Iraq, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. Why? Seems odd. Well, you see, President Trump... Yes, yeah, still not old. President Trump is not suspending visas from the countries that he has selected, countries that he picked or his team picked or anything like that. No, no, no. <laughs> See, this is the funny thing. President Trump is suspending visa approval from countries that were selected by one President Barack Hussein Obama. <gasps> Why does this matter? Barack Hussein Obama wasn't the one who signed this. He wasn't the one who issued it. How long are you going to hide behind ex-presidents? Are we going to talk about what Hillary Clinton would have done next? Oh, isn't that interesting? Countries selected as security risks by President Barack Obama. Hmm. Now, Trump is suspending all of the visa applications from these countries selected by Barack Obama. Nothing to do with Muslim. It's not like you're a Muslim ban. It's just if you're from these countries, visas have been suspended. So not Muslim. And he didn't even choose the countries. Bit of a history to this. In 2013, President Barack Obama suspended refugees from Iraq for six months due to significant security concerns. Now, in it wasn't just significant security concerns. It was the fact that we found two Al-Qaeda people living in the United States that had come from Iraq. In 2015, Congress <sighs> passed a law restricting visas from what were called states of... Also, Congress passed this. It wasn't an executive order. Of ...concerns, right? So countries where there was significant concerns regarding uh, potential for... Why does he keep saying not Muslim? These were Muslim-majority countries where Trump said that he was going to give preference to Christians. Why are we pretending these aren't Muslims? Promises priority for Christians. Trump said that the goal is to screen out radical Islamic terrorists and that priority for admissions would be given to Christians. In an interview with the Christian Broadcasting Network earlier Friday, Trump was asked whether he would prioritize persecuted Christians in the Middle East for admission as refugees, and he replied, yes. So we are going to help Christians. Terrorist infiltration through immigration, through refugee programs and so on. Would you debate this guy if he would join you on stream? Honestly, I don't think I would. I've listened to his debates before and it's, I would legitimately, because I love my son and I want to provide him a good future. I'm pretty sure that if I were to have a conversation with this guy, I would fucking kill myself. I have never heard somebody so smug, but be so air ignorant, a ignorant and arrogant. Although I guess arrogant is smug. Like in my entire life, like this guy takes arrogance to a whole other level and he's just fucking insane. Like he's insane and he's just an idiot. I assume. So this is a 2015 Congress passed this law restricting visas from states of concern and Obama signed 
this law. In okay, Congress passed and Obama signed. That's much different than an executive order. In 2016, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, this is under Jay Johnson, expanded these restrictions. Now, 2016, last year, Obama was still the president. He's in charge. He's in charge. You understand? He's in charge. So what has President Trump been up to? Well, he's taking the same action that Obama took in 2013. It's not the same. I'm sorry. We went over this, right? Is there anybody that doesn't understand or wants to go and read more shit? It's not the same. You understand that, right? Anybody that's telling you it's the same, you can safely ignore anything. Or please, for the love of God, at least take with a heavy grain of salt anything they tell you. This is ridiculous that somebody can have half a million followers on YouTube and you can do a simple fact check on, on what they're saying and determine that it's not true in an in instant. Like, it's so easy and so fast. I don't understand why, how do, how do, like, the environment that you must breed in order to say something that's like, not only is it factually incorrect, it's easily verifiable that it's incorrect, but you can do this to half a million people and nobody will call you on it. What kind of environment are you creating here? That's absolutely ridiculous. Suspending visas. And he's applying these visas. Wait. These are restrictions to the countries that Obama selected as risky governments, risky states. He's taking the same action Obama took in 2013 regarding Iran, applying visa restrictions to the countries Obama selected in 2015 and 2016. Does that reframe it a little bit for you just yeah it reframes it in a disingenuous narrative oh god why how can someone do this unironically that's unbelievable and he's so smug about it too he feels so good like does that look at this guy's look at this fucking this little hi everybody this fucking is... dickheads like facial expressions and how fucking smug he is over all this shit he's selected by the obama administration as states of concern you see not coming out of nowhere. Now, people are freaking out, and I've been sort of following this tonight. A New York judge named Anne Donnelly, who looks exactly as you would expect her to look. What does that so even mean? You're ugly as fuck. You don't even know how to use a fucking razor. You can't make, you're balding. You won't shave the rest of your fucking head. What the fuck? Why would he even make a reference to how a federal judge looks? And you're fucking stupid. You have no redeeming qualities. The only redeeming quality is probably your fucking checking account. And it's a far cry from compensating for the rest of the horrible fucking attributes you have. Holy shit. So she had a judicial ruling. And she targeted only the he had cancer he is cancer current permitted visa holders who were in this kind of limbo tom hanks zone please stop this guy during crossovers makes me want uh, to between kill travel myself. and the denial of entry upon landing and so on so gag. it's like fewer than 200 people are kind of in this limbo around the uh, country so no it's not this giant mess and her ruling stops the department of homeland security from are turning around, like forcibly turning back, people who are currently arriving from Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen, they have current valid visas, they just can't be turned back. So it's fairly small, fairly limited, um, and it's because it is perceived to be creating undue hardship and, and so on. So, so it's fairly small, fairly limited. Not She's not overturned the direct order, the presidential order, or anything like that. Okay. So, it's not a Muslim ban. They're, of, of the top 10 Muslim countries by population in the world, just go and sort them by population. No bans whatsoever. And people are saying, well, this is a Iranian director who wants to come in. Oscar, he wants to come in. He can't. The executive order. Oh, my God, people. The executive order. Just read it. For God's sake, stop reading what people say about stuff and read it yourself. The executive order clearly allows for exceptions. Now, Another thing he said was, uh, hey, Christians get priority over Muslims when it comes to um, this kind of stuff, particularly, I assume, refugees and so on. Christians are, you know, the most persecuted group in the Middle East, for sure, maybe even the world. Yeah, Christians not having a fun time uh, over there. And so he's giving priority to Christians over, over Muslims. Um, 
If I remember rightly, there are a few Muslim countries that seem to give priority to Muslims over Christians. What does that have to do with anything? Is your goal to be as good as Saudi Arabia? That's your goal in life? Why don't you go fucking live over there then, you fucking cuck? That's your dream? Well, let's see if this fucked up country that we hate does it. Maybe we should do it too. Aspire to something greater, dog. Maybe I'm just misremembering mis that. But yeah, sh shockingly, a, a Christian country may be giving some preference to Christians over Muslims. So, so those are just the facts. He said he was going to do it. Why can you? Why can you do this? Why can you get away? How does he get away with it? How does he get away with it? Rudy Giuliani. All right. Good evening, Judge, uh, Mr. You? Mayor. I am fine. This just breaking <laughs> news during my open. Federal judge signing uh, this stay. What can you tell us about it? Well, I think it's. Uh, first of all, I thought your opening was absolutely a terrific explanation of what's been wrong with this country for 20, 30 years. A uh, good deal of time that you were district attorney. I was U.S. attorney in the Southern District right. of New York, and I couldn't get the an immigration service to deport the criminals who were coming out of jail. They put them on bail and they commit more crimes, and then I have to arrest them again. And it's totally absurd. What Donald Trump wants to do, what Homeland Security wants to do under him, is focus on the criminal illegal aliens and get them out of the United States. Who possibly could object to that? I, I, I have no you idea know, what these mayors are thinking about. I, I don't know what they're thinking about either, and I have the same problem. I would seek to have someone deported after they serve their jail time. Their country didn't want them, so the United States would say, okay, we'll keep them. Well, then or what we should do we, is, what we should yeah. do is, first of all, we should develop detention centers for them. They shouldn't, shouldn't be catch and release. They shouldn't go to jail for five years for assault or attempted murder or selling drugs and then go back out on the street. They should go right. into a detention center. They should be I held. Agree. They should be held. And then we should exert all the pressure that we have, which is enormous, by the way, to deport them to the countries where they're supposed to go to. Because and they... in fact, in the executive action that the pre President Trump just signed, he talked about limiting visas from those countries that refuse to accept criminals uh, back to their countries. They say, these countries that say, oh no, he's too, too dangerous for us to take back. Well, here's the deal. Now we're going to pull you by the short hairs. You can't come here. But, but that, that makes perfect sense. And now we've got a president who gets it. Thank well, goodness. Well, that, that actually describes his whole first week in office, which is negotiating in the best interests of the United States of America, not the rest of the world, but protecting our citizens from what's happened with illegal criminal immigrants and in a lot of other areas. Uh, this last week, I think, has been a week that where he has done more than Roosevelt did in 100 days. I don't think there's any question. He, he not only hit the ground running, but he's been airborne since the first 24 hours. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't, I, I know this. I know that. He doesn't, we, you, both you, do. we, we both know him personally, right? This yes. man doesn't sleep. <laughs> he's unbelievable. But I want to ask you about this ban. I want to ask you about this ban and the protest. Does the ban have anything to do with religion? How did the president decide the seven countries? Uh, I understand the permanent ban on the refugees. Okay. Uh, um, and, okay, um, talk to me. tell you the whole history of it. So right. when he first announced it, he said Muslim ban. He called me up, he said, put a commission together, show me the right way to do it legally. I put a commission together with Judge Mukasey, with Congressman McCall, Pete King, whole group of other very expert lawyers on this. And what we did was we focused on, instead of religion, danger. The right. air areas of the world that create danger for us, which is a factual basis, not a religious basis, perfectly legal, perfectly sensible and that's what the ban is based on it's not based on you... religion it's based on places where there are substantial evidence that people are sending terrorists into our country well, let me ask you this. When, when you know, I was kind of surprised to see that Saudi Arabia and Pakistan are not on the list. Happy. And yet, you know, we know that the uh, San Bernardino attack by Syed Farouk and uh, Malik, uh, uh, I think her name was Tashfi Malik, she was born in Pakistan and then came through Saudi Arabia. So, I mean, wh why were some of those countries okay, well, left I'll, out? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is going through a massive change. I think the kingdom, particularly under the new prince, has a real understanding 
that we're dealing with a massive radical Islamic terrorist problem. It is not the old Saudi Arabia. This isn't the Saudi Arabia of 2000, 2001, 2002. Uh, President Obama is dealing with a new Saudi Arabia, which the is President Trump. Yeah. Uh, pre pre President Trump, rather, is dealing with a very different Saudi Arabia than President Obama. But the very expert, so. the right way to do it legally. The whole history of it. So right. when he first announced it, he said Muslim ban. He called me up. He said, put a commission together. Show me the right way to do it legally. <laughs> okay. Remember the facts, guys. Sh shockingly, a, a Christian country may be giving some preference to Christians over Muslims. So. Christian country. That's how. So good. those are just the facts. He said he was going to do it. It's actually less than he said he was going to do. Of course, we'll see what goes from. And it's temporary. And it's for seven countries from a list developed by Barack Obama, law passed by Congress, signed by Obama. Just what Obama did in the past. Law passed by Congress and signed by Obama. What was not, is not the same as what he's talking about now. It, had, didn't, didn't, it didn't involve seven countries. It involved one specific country. They were still able to get in via an interview process. And it didn't restrict green card holders from coming back to the United States. What facts is he talking about? This is the definition of fake news. And these are all the guys that use the term fake news the most. These guys are the, all the ones that run around t claiming CNN and Fox News and everything are fake news. And then they get their news from people like this and Sargon and fucking um, and the Infowars and Paul Joseph Watson. Like, But see, it didn't matter then, right? For you guys on the left. It didn't matter when Obama did it. It didn't matter when Obama developed this list of seven countries. It didn't matter when he signed the law doesn't matter because because he's your team right he's your team he's not the republicans so if your team does it it's gold baby but if the republicans do it it's stone satanic evil do you have the capacity to look in the mirror and see yourself for what you've become why How, dude i can't do it i can't do it anymore i can't do it I think that, like, for the most part, I wasn't able to get into college on scholarship because um, cause I was lazy as fuck in school. I think that I can read r really well. I think that my reading is probably above average. But past that, I don't really consider myself to be an exceptionally intelligent person. I probably know more about music than most people because I studied it in college. And I know a fair bit about video games. And then I can read quickly. There's no way that I, I am, like, the top, like, 0.1% of intelligent people in society. I don't believe this. How can there be this many people that fail these many basic cognitive checks, right? I don't understand. I don't understand at all. This is unbelievable. Pe that, so people turn this guy on, they get their news and their information from him, and then they, are, are, are that many people really just that stupid? Like, it's unbelievable to me. I, like, we Googled in two seconds. We just Googled in two seconds, and we found out that everything this guy just said was a lie. We were targeting Muslims. That's what Giuliani said. Giuliani said that Trump initially called for a Muslim ban. Um, Trump over here is looking at giving preferential treatments to Christians. Um, these bans are not the same as the bans that happened in the past or under Obama. Even if they were the exact same, Obama passed it via Congress, like you're supposed to, and didn't sign it via executive order. And Obama did it with consultation from the defense industry and from all of the people involved in that. He didn't just sign an order unilaterally, put it through in a day, and then leave everybody else figuring out how the fuck they were supposed to deal with it. The Department of Homeland Security didn't get out a statement until later that day, assuring people that they were going to enforce it. After federal judges were looking at an injunction and whatnot against it like <sighs> base echo chamber zombies of in-group preference from hell how can he say this defense industry i shouldn't have said defense i mean like the dod and all of our cia fbi nsa i'm, I'm sure that obama like all of those people had action plans in place for when this went through one of the problems with um one of the problems that Trump had with this recent ban was that um was that um nobody nobody like knew it was coming through so nobody was ready for it. I don't know why you donated me twenty dollars. You fucking charge that shit back, dude. I'm never reading this fucking book. I'm never reading a book called Cuck Servative, dude. With virtually no debate, Congress passed the most radical change to immigration law in American history. Since 1965, America has endured the biggest mass migration of people in human history. Twi I'm uh, never mind. 
twice the size of the great wave of immigration in the USA between 1870 and 1930. As a result, Americans are being displaced in their own land by an ongoing invasion that dwarfs Operation Barbarossa. First of all, Americans aren't being displaced. If you migrate here legally, you have a child, that child is an American. They're not displacing anybody. It's an American, okay? I'm an American, okay? My mom came from Cuba and then had me as a child, okay? I'm an American. I'm not displacing anybody. This is as much my country as it is yours, unless you're a Native American. The only people that are allowed to act like this, if you are a Native American, you have every right to get up and talk about the dangers of immigration and that you are destroying the purity of the people here, okay? If you're a Native American, then by all means, like, that's a much different argument. Like, you have to go far deeper in, in order to challenge that. If you're some Italian, Irish, fucking cuck bullshit, German, whatever, some Eurocentric bullshit, shut the fuck up, dude, and sit the fuck down. You have just as much claim to this land as any Mexican that comes here and then has a kid, and then that kid is a fucking American, okay? Relying, celebrating the massive invasion. Yeah, I don't think so, dude. No reasoning, no principles, no facts. No Our facts. Your team good, your team bad. It would be... I'd call it Simeon, but I have more respect for Simeons. Here's the thing. This is the rant part. If you're done with facts, you can turn me off right now, but you might want to stick around. Oh, thank God we've got a rant part for this guy that just gave us a whole bunch of fucking misinformation. And now we can get a rant on how self-righteous he is. Did he even do any research for the video? Do you think this guy's research, his prep for videos, involves going on to Breitbart, reading like the headlines, and then coming on to tell everybody about how wrong they are? These are just big picture thoughts I have. The Middle East is a mess. And the Middle East is a mess to some degree because it's the Middle East. And to another degree because Western governments have been meddling in the region. Now, part of the reason why Western governments have been meddling in the region is because Western governments and Western technology and Western demand created a massive oil industry, which then Middle Eastern governments, a lot of them, stole from the West. And therefore, there have been some involvement. That's a very, very quick picture of a very, very complex topic. But countries in the Middle East have been horrendously, brutally destabilized, invaded, overrun. Enemies have been funded. Civil wars have been fomented under both Republicans and Democrats. George Bush invaded two countries. And President Barack Obama, over the course of his eight years, innumerable drone strikes that hit a lot of uh, unspecified targets, also known as people you love and care about. But Obama, after, I guess, receiving the Peace Prize, proceeded to drop 100,000 bombs in seven countries, mostly Muslim, largely in the Middle East. See, that's a lot of bombing. Where was the anti-war movement then? Oh. The anti-war movement is the reason why we haven't been on the ground in Iraq. What the fuck is this guy talking about? The anti-war movement is the entire reason why we pulled out of Iraq probably a little bit earlier than we should have. The anti-war movement was the reason why we didn't have anybody committed on the ground there and, and we subsequently let Iraq fall apart and ISIS overrun and take over half the fucking country to the north. What the fuck? How can you be a history revisionist when it's not even a decade ago that these things happen? We literally left Iraq on Bush's timetable because of anti-war sentiments in the United States. Oh, that's right. See, he's on your team. So when he bombs seven Muslim countries, it's fine. But it's not. And people are still incredibly aggravated that Obama wasn't able to shut down Guantanamo Bay either. When Bush, oh, terrible, and the invasion was terrible. The invasions were terrible. Wrong. Where were you people on the left? Why weren't you after Obama and Lynch and Holder to hold the people accountable from the Republican? I can't. This guy's a fucking idiot, dude. God, he's so fucking stupid. He's, he fails as a human being on so many accounts. 
he's wrong, which is fine. People are wrong. I'm wrong all the fucking time about shit. If I'm wrong, feel free to send me an email and call me out. He's wrong. He's smug as fuck about being wrong. He lacks critical thinking ability, right? Like, why would you, why would you come on to a YouTube video where you have half a million subs and then put out a video where, 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 you, where you start ranting about easily disprovable facts? This is what Trump does when he starts arguing about the size of his inauguration crowd. I just want to, I just want to build things. What's up, guys? How are we doing?